All right, let's talk about pressure a little bit again, and specifically the electronic training collar as a form of pressure. What I want you to do, I want, to ask, I want you to ask yourself, do you think you're gonna to need to use the electronic training collar in the field while training or while hunting, for example? If your answer is yes, you think you're gonna to need to use it at some point, I would say you're correct. One of the biggest reasons why you probably will need to use it, there's really two main reasons. One is the farther a dog gets away from you, naturally it becomes more independent. So let's say in a wild pack of dogs, one member goes off by itself. Well, it's by itself, so it's now one of one. It's dominant because there's no comparison. So it is the one. It has to make its own decisions and do its own thing while it's gone. Then it comes back with the pack, and of course they would do all their little, little stuff that dogs do to establish the order again. They're obsessed with this. But anyway, so when your dog gets far away from you, 100, 200, 300, 400 yards away from you, it naturally becomes more independent. So you might need to use the electronic training collar for its own safety and for training to be productive. Number two, uh, reason the second reason there you I think you would need to use it is there's so many competing reinforcers out in the real world out where you're training or hunting there's sights sounds and smells that are beyond your control and your dog can reward itself by smelling something seeing something chasing something eating something any I mean if you can dream it up a dog can like reward itself for misbehavior by doing this or run around and find the bird or bumper when you're trying to blow the whistle um, and get rewarded. So it's a whole different situation than like training in a gymnasium with the door closed or training in a in an aquarium, so to speak, you know. Anyways, if you think you're gonna need to use it, the electron training collar, I think you're right. But you have to do your job and make sure the dog understands any way you're going to use that collar in the field, you're going to need to condition the dog to this pressure. So anyways, you're going to need to condition your dog to any way you're going to use a collar. Let's say back, you know, it won't go back and back, Nick, back. You know, you've heard of that. Okay. This is something you've already done before. Um, your dog's running around, won't listen. You're going to recall it here, toot toot with the whistle, and you're going to correct it. You've already done that in the yard, in the basics and transition training. You've done that. Dog won't take your cast, and you're going to use indirect pressure. Indirect pressure. Toot, Nick, toot. You've already done that a bunch in, on land and water. So land the tee, water swim by. So anyway, you've already done that, and you've done your due diligence to teach the dog how to respond to the collar. And if you haven't done that, then you really cannot fairly use the collar on the field. So in the dynamic do it yourself, I'm gonna walk you through all this and that's why I have to see the video clips of you and your dog. So I can say, look at that, that's good. Or no, we need to do this. And I can read your dog, I can read you and your body language. And there's so many things that are so important as far as your dog and you that I need to see to give you the best feedback, to be fair to your dog, be thorough, to do this the right way. I need to see it. Thanks, bye.